Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this video, I want to give you a um, feeling for the state of the climate. So, you know, what's been happening the last little while um, in all aspects of climate change. So I find that the one of the best ways that I can do that is to just uh, reverse chronologically go through um, the work that uh, Dr. Peter Carter has done uh, with his uh, Climate Emergency Institute that he started. And he spends huge amounts of time and in an analysis of uh, recent scientific papers, and he puts together, you know, images summarizing, uh, you know, what he sees. And, uh, you know, he, he produces copious amounts of material, and it's all really, really good stuff to give you an understanding of what's going on with climate change. So without further ado, um, I'm going to go through um, some of his recent work. Just work my way backwards from his latest post. So this is on Twitter. You can follow him. Um, P. Carter Climate on Twitter.com. Okay, so this is his feed. Um, so basically, okay, so 15 hours ago he posted highest impact marine heat waves increased 20 times the duration, intensity of most impact of the lar of large most impactful marine heat waves has increased more than 20 fold as a result of anthropogenic climate change. Okay, so let me just look at the link here. Um, so here we go in the abstract. So this is very, very significant. Marine heat waves are periods of extremely high ocean temperatures in specific regions. They've occurred in all of Earth's ocean basins over the past two decades, with severe negative impacts on marine organisms and ecosystems. Okay, so what they do in this paper is they show that the occurrence probabilities of the duration, intensity, and cumulative intensity of most documented large and impactful marine heat waves have increased more than 20 fold as a result of anthropogenic climate change. So marine heat waves that used to occur only once every hundreds of thousands, hundreds to thousands of years in the pre-industrial climate are projected to become decadal to centennial events under 1.5 C warming conditions relative to pre-industrial. And with three degrees Celsius warming, they notch up even more and they become annual to decadal events. Okay, so there's, uh, let's just have a look at the image here. Okay, so this shows, uh, this is duration in days versus year. And you can see the huge uptick since 2010 in these marine heat waves. Uh, this is the location, uh, you know, over here of the different um, heat waves. So they're numbered. And those numbers correspond with what you see on the plot. So three, for example, remember that big, huge heat wave in the North Pacific up in this region? Um, that lasted close, you know, it looks like 200 and, um, 250 to 300 days. So this is duration. And then down here we have peak temperature anomaly. Um, and this is uh, peak temperature anomaly in degrees Celsius. So you can see they're lasting for much longer. They're getting much warmer. And uh, you can also look at the cumulative intensity over the whole event. And because this guy here lasted so long, it's a lot of red here, cumulative intensity, degrees Celsius times days, the product. And you can see um, the, uh, the situation going on here, you know, spikes upward. Um, this is a table showing, you know, the heat wave number, time and location, duration, um, the intense cumulative intensity, and so on. So we're getting more and more of these um, massive heat waves in the ocean. Okay, so that's that. That's the first uh, situation. Uh, this is also. What is this showing? Big one-year warming increase from May, May 20, 
2023 relative to May 2022, an increase of 0.22 degrees Celsius. That's a huge increase in one year. The Northern Hemisphere is at 1.5 C already. Okay, Northern Hemisphere is warmer than the Southern Hemisphere. There's large Antarctic region with very high warming. We need to stop heating, therefore we need to stop burning fossil fuels for our future survival. To do anything else is criminal. So this is the graphic here. So this is May 2023, um, and you can see it's relative to the 1951 to 1980 baseline. It's 0 0.94 degrees Celsius. Um, and uh, what you can see here is you can see the Antarctic warming here. And this is a view here of the Arctic. You can see warming, this is Greenland here. You can see huge warming in two big areas, which are these two. And the Antarctic, you can see the huge warming here. Now this is relative to the 1951 to 1980 baseline. If you look at it relative to the 1881 to 1920 baseline, you can see where we are. So May, 2023, we were 1.28 degrees Celsius warmer than you know this baseline and you can see where the warmth is huge warming in the arctic also in antarctica the whole northern hemisphere has warmed you know 1.5 degrees celsius relative to this time frame if you look at one year ago may 2022 we were at 1.06 degrees celsius warmer relative to the 1881 to 1920 baseline so look at the huge difference here. We've gained 0.22 degrees Celsius just in one year. You know, climate change is accelerating um, very, very rapidly. Okay, so, so this was uh, sent out and, you know, Peter always, uh, you know, he's got his name and the Climate Emergency Institute down at the bottom. Okay, so world sea surface temp surface is running hot in many regions. Much of the sea surface temperature is far above normal. China Sea hotspot last summer. Atlantification of warm water entering the, entering, warming the Arctic shows on the Arctic view. The, it's an added factor in the sea ice melt. So the Arctic is being attacked on all fronts. It's being attacked by warm air, by warm water. Okay, so this just shows a, this is June 22nd, 2023. Um, this post was June 23rd, um, so this post was just yesterday. This is Climate Reanalyzer. You can Google Climate Reanalyzer. You can get this data and look at the, so we've got the warm ocean in warm equatorial Pacific. This is the El Nino kicking in, but look at the warming here up in, in the North Atlantic, the UK, you know, off Europe. Um, this whole North Atlantic is, is setting exceptional temperature records with warming. Um, and this is the China Sea over on this side. Um, and it set records uh, last year. And this is the sea surface temperature. Um, this is the date. Um, this is uh, January, Fe uh, this is, uh, sorry, um, February, March, April, May, June. Here we are right now. You know, and look where we are relative to um, previous years. I mean, we're blowing off the scale for uh, this for for uh, sea surface temperatures. Okay, we're just we're just way off the scale. That's that's uh, sea surface temperature for the world, and this is from uh, 60 degrees south to 60 degrees north. Um, I believe it says. Okay, so let's just keep going. Um, more on the North Atlantic marine heat wave. Around the UK, it's reached five degrees Celsius above normal. Of course, these warm waters are a threat to marine life and they could worsen the heat waves over land this summer, right? Um, you know, very, very warm oceans. You get a lot of evaporation and, uh, you know, it heats the air above them when it goes over the land and then is heated. You can, it can set record heat waves over land this summer. Okay, so sea surface temperature west of the UK is at the highest category marine heat wave. Scientists are astounded not only by how much the North Atlantic waters have warmed during the past month, but also how early in the year the heat wave is occurring. 
Okay, and again, the warm waters are a threat to marine life, could worsen heat waves over land this summer. Five degrees Celsius, nine degrees Fahrenheit above normal. The warmest the ocean's been in 170 years. It's more typical of temperatures in August and September, you know, when it's had the whole summer to heat up. So, so it's already that, and we're, we're just in, uh, in June here, so it's, it's crazy. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there's, so Peter also refers back to the paper I just showed you in the first um, post on Twitter, uh, or the most recent one. Um, the frequency of marine heat waves has already increased more than 20-fold due to human-caused global warming. Sea surface temperatures running as high as 5 Celsius above normal, warmest in 170 years. Um, okay, I'm repeating some of these things, uh, but they're very important. Um, this uh, associate professor of biosciences at Swansea University in the UK is a founding director of Project Seagrass. He called the Atlantic heat wave totally unprecedented. It's way beyond the worst case predictions for the changing climate of the region. It's truly frightening how fast this ocean basin is changing. Okay, so the North Atlantic has been in the grips of this unprecedented marine heat wave for the past three months. Um, Project Seagrass is the idea of how do we restore seagrasses because they're huge uh, sinks, marine sinks of, of carbon. So this is a you know, heat wave category. So it's the highest possible heat wave category off the UK. And here's a close up, here's, a, here's, a, here's an image of, the, of, of what it's actually looked like. And it looks like. Now you saw a little bit in the previous one here. So it's just a blow up of, of that region. And uh, you know, the whole, this whole region is extremely warm. Okay, so moving on, the Earth's energy imbalance has doubled in 14 years. So the NASA NOAA study on the Earth's energy imbalance. Now, if the Earth energy imbalance is, if the Earth, if there is no Earth energy imbalance, the uh, temperature stays the same, right? The overall Earth temperature stays the same. As long as there's an Earth energy imbalance, more energy coming in than going out, then temperature rises on the planet. Um, and that the, where the heat is distributed uh, varies, you know, it's distributed in, in all the Earth systems. So some regions, because of heat capacity, the ability to store heat, obviously the oceans don't warm as much as the atmosphere. So the energy, Earth energy imbalance, it doubled between 2005 and 2019. It's an explosive increase in energy and it's ongoing. It's the most dire planetary emergency finding that applies today. So, so this is um, uh, this is the so the NASA press release on June fifteenth. Researchers found that Earth's energy imbalance doubled during the fourteen-year period from two thousand and five to twenty nineteen. And here's a plot. So we got the net top of the atmosphere radiation from the series monitoring satellite and planetary heat uptake um, and you know why does it happen it's the result of an increase in greenhouse gases we've got greenhouse gases increasing at record rates uh, the warming is causing an increase in evaporation so there's more water vapor trapping more of the outgoing long wave radiation or heat there's a decrease in clouds and a sea ice decrease so the arctic is turning much much darker but also a big one, according to James Hansen, in um, you know his recent uh, excellent paper, "Global Warming in the Pipeline." Um, it's the loss of of uh, aerosols. We reduced aerosols in shipping traffic, for example, and the aerosols create low-level clouds and block some of the sunlight uh, from heating the Earth. But removing the aerosols too quickly, and we have this Faustian bargain. Where, where surface temperatures greatly increase. So that's probably, that's a big factor that's, that's happened too, it's not mentioned here. Okay, so let's move on. Professor Elliot Jacobson, another great person to follow on Twitter. Your moment of doom for June 22nd, 2023. Okay, it is now clear that Earth's climate system is way out of kilter and we should be very concerned. So here, here is the, um, here is watts per square meter of increase, um, and it's basically from this paper here. So we can click on this 
paper here, global average sea and air temperatures are spiking in 2023 before El Nino has fully arrived. So this is the Earth energy imbalance, 36 month running mean from February 2003 to March 2023. And you can just see, you know, the, the, the rise up. I mean, there's some variation up and down, but the trend is huge. So there's been recent spikes in ocean heat content, global air temperature, you know, scientists are scrambling to find the cause. The global average air temperature relative to 1850 to 1900, it exceeded the 1.5 Celsius lower Paris Agreement threshold during part of March and the first days in June. This last happened in 2020 and before that during the 2015 to 2016 El Nino that was powerful. Okay, uh, and these things are happening now before the El Nino event, not during it. So we're really out of kilter here. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, and then it goes on. I, I don't, I'm not gonna um, go through all of the details, but you know, each, the, the most important ones, by the way, if you, see, if you see something that you think is vital that I do a separate video on, I can go and analyze it and look at the scientific paper and do all those details. But right now I'm giving you sort of an overview from what Peter has, has put together and, and tweeted. So we're up to, uh, we're still on yesterday here. Current policies lead to an unlivable future. Current policies lead to 3.2 Celsius by 2100. This is the IPCC assessment report six, working group three, unlivable, higher after 2100. 1.5 C is globally disastrous, 2 C is global climate catastrophe, and we're heading to 3.2. Okay, so this is, the, um, this is the projections for the different scenarios. It's relative to 1850 to 1900, global surface temperature change, and then the different um, socio, the, the different SSPs, uh, uh, pathways um, in the IPC reports, the latest assessment. So what you can see is the high-end scenarios are taking us, you know, really, really high. I mean, this is uh, passing, uh, you, you know, look at the, this is passing 3.2 by 2100 um, is, is the current policies. And then you've got these scenarios, um, you know, whether we cut emissions or continue where we're going and, you know, we're reaching some hugely high temperatures. And then this is the so-called burning embers diagram, um, which shows you um, the problems. So the problems with unique and threatened systems, extreme weather events. So the very high risks are the purple, high is red, moderate is yellow, undetectable is is the white so we we can see you know look at the extent of all of the purple and we have food insecurity food security is projected up to three celsius i think that's generous at three celsius all crops in all regions are in decline okay this is just what they're saying so this is this is where where we're at this is from the ipcc ar6 report okay why on earth is sea surface temperature soaring it could be the insane amount of heat that's been added to the ocean and is still being added to the ocean that maybe that maybe was not so convenient for us. So rapid rising sea surface temperatures still. And here's some images. Almost all of the added heat resides in the Southern Ocean, but in the North Atlantic, sea surface temperatures increasing fast. Okay, in 2006, uh, James Lovelock, right? The founder of the Gaia hypothesis, he said that ocean heat would feed back. The amount of heat put in the world's oceans in the past 25 years equals 3.6 billion Hiroshima atomic bomb explosions. That's seven bombs, or seven to nine bombs are added every second now. Two thirds of the heat is in the upper zero to 700 meter of the ocean. Although the heat reaches the ocean floor, the, the heat is stratifying the ocean column. This would leave even more heat in the upper ocean. So warm and cold layers mix less, right? Because of the density difference is larger. So this traps heat at the surface, speeding the planet's warming. So here is the heat content in, uh, you know, something like zeta joules, um, you know, from 1960 to now, and you can see the curves are heading up at sharper and sharper rates. This is the North Atlantic. 
Um, this was uh, 21st of June, a couple days ago, 23.3 degrees Celsius. Look, this is all the other years here, and we're way outside of that band. You know, this is the overall world ocean between 60 south and 60 north in latitude. And you can see 20.9 Celsius on 21st of June, right? The oceans are going, going bananas in terms of heat. Vast global wetlands. Wetlands are the largest natural methane source and now methane feedback emissions are occurring with them. Emissions from South America and Africa have to be from wetlands. So this is the vast global wetlands, which is the largest natural methane source and methane feedback. So what you can see is, um, you can see the, um, the, the uh, areas of, of green are more and more wetlands are in those regions. Um, Pantanal, the world's largest wetland, is right smack dab in the middle of South America. Um, you've got the Amazon up here. Um, so you can see the areas of where there are wetlands. And um, the global inland and coastal wetlands cover over 12.1 million square kilometers, are almost as large as Greenland. Human-made wetlands, largely rice paddies and reservoirs, are about 12% of the total wetlands. And here's uh, Copernicus with the methane readings. Um, and you can see, you know, you can match up and see where the methane's coming from. So the Amazon rainforest wetlands over here, you know, and the reds are spiking up to over 2160 parts per billion for, for methane. So, you know, these are, uh, you know, wetlands in bays and, and uh, along coastlines are the yellow, the yellow along the coastlines. Um, islands with substantial wetland area are is circled. I don't see where where that is. I guess it's right here, for example. There's it's too small to show up on the map, so it's circled. And then mangroves. These are these are mangroves. Is the uh, is the uh, light green areas um, and uh, well yeah I, I think so Mang well I mean you're not getting mangroves in the central area but but anyway um, these are these are wetlands so wetlands are predominant in these areas more and more in um, large numbers of them in, in the darker green areas okay so uh, small mobile friendly state of our climate site, regular updates. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at this and see what we get here. Um, state of our climate. Okay, so this is Peter's, uh, he's added a mobile site um, for his, uh, for, for planetary emergency signs. So he's generated, uh, you know, stuff, the indicator data sets, etc. I mean, tremendous amounts of work you know, the oceans, accelerating ocean acidification. Well, let's have, let's go through and see what this is. Okay, uh, CO2 emissions, 36.8 billion tons in 2022. That's from the International Energy Agency. Um, the atmospheric greenhouse gases, uh, so CO2 levels um, at Mauna Loa and methane levels where they're, you know, it's spiking upwards because of wetland feedback emissions. Um, the uh, atmospheric nitrous oxide, uh, the CO2 equivalent. This is very important. The CO2 equivalent. So this is uh, not just CO2 in the atmosphere. It's, uh, you know, it includes the components from methane multiplied by the global warming, global warming potential of methane and nitrous oxide as well. And you can see how this is just, look at the, the huge rise from 1950. I mean, we're spiking up, we're huge. It's 523 ppm. It's almost equivalent to, if you were looking at just CO2, it's like doubling CO2, we're already there you know, from 280 to 560. We're not quite there, but we're getting very close. Global emissions, 36.8 billion tons in 2022. Uh, COVID slight dip, but it's all recovered. So an, incre uh, an increased rate from, from 2000, excuse me. Global greenhouse gas, greenhouse gas emissions in 2021 as CO2 equivalent. 
you know, uh, you know, here we are, you can equate it to if it was just, so the other greenhouse gases, methane and nitrous, make it equivalent to 54.6 billion tons. Okay, uh, oceans, um, that's, that's uh, CO2, methane, nitrous oxide. It's also agriculture and land use change. Oceans, accelerating ocean heat. No wonder why the oceans are seem to be breaking. This is zeta joules, 10 to the 21 joules. And you can see, you know, compared to a 1981 to 2010 baseline, you know, it's just, it's just heading up. I mean, it looks like it's pretty linear here. Accelerating ocean acidification. The pH uh, is dropping quickly and the acidif that represents an increase in the acidification. Okay, uh, the oceans have absorbed about 30% of the CO2 emissions. Ocean acidification has increased 30% in the past 140 years. The carbon sink efficiency of the oceans has started to decline according to the Global Carbon Project and this is because of the warming oceans. There's accelerating ocean deoxygenation. This is the change in subsurface dissolved oxygen concentration, um, ocean oxygen, 100 to 600 meter depth. Okay, so you can see a decline. Uh, so you've got triple accelerating ocean degradation from greenhouse gas emissions, ocean heat rising, acidification up, PhD down, and deoxygenation is occurring. Temperature increase. This is globally, this is the Northern Hemisphere, right? The Northern Hemisphere is at 1.5 Celsius. Globally, 1.16 degrees Celsius. Surface melting, ice sheet mass loss, Greenland, it's accelerating. And, you know, if you look at the huge drop here after about, uh, what, 2000, 2005, and Antarctica, a steady increase downward. Okay, so this is a, this is a good site. Okay, um, mer meat, dairy, and rice consumption over 1.5 C and 2 C is mainly avoidable, uh, mainly avoidable methane emissions. So if we really cut down on our meat, dairy, we could do, make a big dent, dent in uh, methane emissions. Ruminant meat is up 90% by 2050. Uh, so anyway, let's have a look. This is a nature.com article. Um, continued trend of meat, dairy, and rice consumption will blow through 1.5 and 2 due to avoidable methane emissions from food. We find that global food consumption alone could add nearly 1 degree Celsius to warming by 2100. 75% of this warming is driven by foods that are high sources of methane, so ruminant meats dairy and rice. Um, only one third of countries reference agricultural mitigation measures and nationally determined contributions to the Paris Agreement. Um, methane is responsible for the majority of the projected increase, accounting for 60% of the warming associated with food consumption. About 20% is attributed to each of CO2 and nitrous oxide. So this is the um, this is the increase of temperature just from the methane, uh, CO2, and nitrous oxide in uh, food production. Um, and this shows you some other breakdowns in terms of meat, rice, and dairy uh, in terms of em methane emissions. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, heat records, Mexico, Texas, hot as the Sahara Desert. Another heat dome, worse than before and expected to last longer. So this is uh, just from June 21st. Look, it's, it's June 24th. I've only made it back to June 21st. I have to speed up uh, a bit. So the Texas heat wave has smashed some all-time records and there's no relief in sight. Okay, so there was heat building up coming northward out of Mexico. It shifted into higher gear. And, uh, you know, Del Rio, Texas, 113 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, of course. Laredo, 115. San Angelo uh, smashed all-time record, reaching 114 Fahrenheit. Uh, 118 at Rio Grande Village. You know, each of these cities is, were as hot or hotter than Death Valley, California. Uh, Corpus Christi, heat index of 125. 
So all time records being set in Texas and also in Mexico. So here's a high pressure area of this heat dome and it's showing here, you know, look at this uh, scale here. This is in Celsius. You know, these temperatures are approaching 50 Celsius in these regions here. So hitting Mexico and also throughout Texas. You know, also, I mean, look at the, lot to mention the temperatures across, uh, across Africa. Okay, so this, World the Bank, the World Bank has a press release. We're spending $7 trillion on killing subsidies, on these subsidies for the fossil fuel industry that are killing us. Very important report, it gives subsidies for fossil fuels, agriculture, and fisheries, and those exceed 7, million, 7 trillion in explicit and implicit subsidies. So there is uh, the press release, uh, June 15th. Trillions of dollars are wasted on subsidies for agriculture, fishing, and fossil fuels that could be used to help address climate change instead of harming people and the planet, a World Bank report says. So the report is called Detox Development, Repurposing Environmentally Harmful Subsidies. Um, countries spend about six times what they pledge to mobilize annually under the Paris Agreement for renewable energies and low carbon development. They on, on basically subsidizing fossil fuel consumption. There isn't money for climate, they say, but <laughs> you know, there obviously is. It's just being put in the wrong places. It's being still pumped into the fossil fuel industry subsidies. Government subsidies of 577 billion in 2021 artificially lowered the price of polluting fuels like oil, gas, and coal, exacerbating climate change, causing toxic air pollution, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, um, it's not just direct government expenditures, the subsidies, it's implicit subsidies, which amount to six trillion each year. Okay, so basically we're talking about seven trillion dollars in explicit and implicit subsidies every year. You know, no wonder why the planet is, the planet's not just dying, we're actually killing it. Um, another article on sudden increase North Atlantic heating. Um, Europe's already heating at twice the global average, so this will boost it some more, right? The warmer oceans off Europe. Increased warm water is, uh, amount of warm water is entering the Arctic, causing the sea ice to decline. So this is, uh, you know, Peter's been tracking this um, in, on Climate Reanalyzer. Here we were at 23.1. Um, on June 19th and you know the UK you know this is Europe here you know massive amounts of heat okay explosive atmospheric methane from wetland feedback um, atmospheric methane is at 1930 that's a stunning increase of 166 percent over uh, you know pre-industrial so here is explosive atmospheric methane uh, from feedback this is Mauna Loa mean methane concentration. Look at the huge jump here. 2020 concentration jump due to warmed wetland feedback. Um, this is the, uh, you know, we were at seven, pre-industrial methane was at 722 parts per billion. The 800, over the whole 800,000 uh, 800, years of records in the ice core in Antarctica, the methane limit, it never went over 800 parts per billion. And look where we are now, you know, just massive. 38 million people under a heat alert, US South, Southwest. Uh, of course, fossil fuels equals global warming equals extreme heat, daily temperature records being broken. So this is some of the areas in the US, you know, with these record heat waves and especially down in Texas. Uh, very, very warm temperatures there. Uh, recent rapid tropical forest carbon loss. So weakens the forest carbon sink, doubling of annual forest carbon loss over the tropics during the early 21st century. So here's another paper. Um, this is by Yu Feng, February, 2023. Um, you've got large scale agriculture You've got forestry, small scale agriculture, and you can see the areas uh, where there's tropical forest carbon loss. Uh, you know, the Amazon rainforest, Central Africa, 
central to mid-Africa, the Indonesian archipelago. Okay, uh, the Glass Glasgow uh, Conference, it was a declaration on forests and land use, pledged to halt forest loss in less than a decade, but we've been seeing acceleration in tropical forest loss. Okay, these conferences with promises aren't doing anything. Fossil fuels are not compatible with our survival, according to UN Secretary General Guterres. Um, this was said in June 2023. Um, this is, I think, at the Bonn, uh, early June, the Bonn Climate Conference, where he gave this speech. Okay, so NOAA updated their global atmospheric greenhouse gases, and you can get more detail from here. I'll just go here quickly. Um, Right, so they give the updates and you can see the global averages and the global growth rate. This is for CO2, right? So it's just trending upwards. Um, and this is a, th a 3D version um, of the, this is CO2 in change with latitude, growth, way, another, another way to depict it. And you could look at methane. Um, you could look at the methane numbers. Look at the huge rise here. Um, you know, 3D images. Uh, this is uh, the sign of the latitude and the growth rate. It's a good. It's a good way of depicting it. You can see the huge rises, and also for N2O. Okay, and you can also do it for. You can also look at CO, carbon monoxide measurements. Okay, and SF6. SF6 is a very, very powerful greenhouse gas. So you can see how the levels are rising. It's parts per billion per year, um, global average. Oh, this is sulfur, yeah, sulfur hexafluoride. And okay, this is the average, this is the rise, and this is the average growth rate. Okay, so very good, uh, you know, website. Um, so you can see uh, the details on, on greenhouse gases are still growing and growing and growing at ever faster rates. Okay, methane flux shows sudden feedback increase in 2019. Um, and uh, so here's, here we have the curve and we can see in 2018, there was this 2019 sudden increase and it's being attributed to wetlands. There's no sign of it slowing down. Increased wildfires in the western U.S. Um, the cumulative area burned by wildfire in the western U.S. with and without climate change. Um, so here we go. This is wildfires without climate change. And this is what we're seeing with climate change. You know, a huge increase in the number of millions of hectares that are burned. Okay, this is western U.S.A. British Columbia, Canada, largest wildfire ever, Donny Creek North, 5,343.88 square kilometers. Drought, high temperatures, led to record wildfire um, size. And here we go, uh, here's a region where you can see it, sparked May 12th by lightning. You know, the area's been in drought, high temperature, the previous record was the Plateau Fire in 2017, largest individual fire. Very early start to fire season, as you know, uh, much of Canada is burning. Um, so this was, uh, you know, situation in BC uh, just, uh, you know, four days ago or so. Okay, so massive fires. Explosive atmospheric methane, now 1930 ppb. Um, okay, this is a this is a, a close-up view of methane change since 2019 and you can see this uh, you know explosive increase due to warming wetlands so 1930 is confirmed as part per billion 1970 still needs to be confirmed so 1930 is confirmed that's this level here but 1970 you know this sort of this part needs to be confirmed but again the 800,000 year ice core upper limit for methane 800 parts per billion that's from Antarctic ice cores pre-industrial methane um, that was uh, 722 
parts per billion. So we're well, well out of the scales. So atmospheric greenhouse gases have been accelerating. Um, all records are high and increasing at accelerating rates. So CO2, methane, nitrous oxide. Um, in 2021, record values were reached. This is April 2023. The World Meteorological Organization uh, State of the Climate 2022 report. I might, maybe I should do a, a video on this on this report in detail. Um, carbon dioxide is 149 percent higher now than pre-industrial. Methane 262 percent higher, and nitrous oxide 124 percent higher. Of course, Ontario fires, three times more fires than last year. The Canada fires spread to Ontario, right? Started in BC and Alberta, Saskatchewan, and then Ontario and Quebec. Um, you know, here's, here's Ontario and all of the different fires, new fires, active fires as of, uh, you know, June, June 19th. Uh, some of the images of fires. Um, the atmospheric CO2 record is, the trend is accelerating, accelerating increase. Atmospheric CO2, global heating, ocean acidification, current increase is fast, if not faster than ever. Okay, so you can see, uh, you know, the, the accelerating increase from 1960 to present. Um, and here we are, in May, we were 420.57. Canada burns, Ontario, Quebec, fire danger, okay, lots of stuff on fires. The heat alert in the U.S. South, um, you know, uh, Texas and Mexico. Again, uh, the WMO record high sea surface temperatures, seven, six, seven to nine Hiroshima atom bombs per second. Heating the oceans, the equivalent. Um, this is the Antarctic sea ice, the record low. This is the hot Antarctica, was 1.3 Celsius above the, 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 the 1997 to 2000 average. Here is the sea surface temperature, world temperatures, and the North Atlantic record. So as these continue to rise, um, you know, Peter gives an update. Why we must limit warming to one Celsius. Our paper demonstrates the tools, technology, uh, the, the tools. Technology exists to achieve safer, healthier, prosperous future economically is economically viable. Proposing a 1C target. So there was a paper here. Um, just have a quick look at it. Limiting global warming to 2C is not enough. Why the world must keep temperature rise below 1. Okay, so there's a recent research paper on this and how we can possibly maybe, uh, you know, head back there. But Okay, so CDR, they've got carbon dioxide removal, okay? I mean, there's no other way of doing it. Um, so they call for a broad scientific discussion about a stricter and more ambitious climate target of one Celsius by the end of this century. So saying 1.5 is not enough, we need rapid defossilization, large scale electricity based carbon dioxide removal, and I think uh, we'll have to have solar radiation management as well. So these technologies don't exist yet. Um, the EU Scientific Advisory Board on Climate Change Strategies advised 90 to 95% greenhouse gas reductions by 2040. Um, that would be a 35% cut on 2030. That, so we have reductions for 2030, but you know, we need larger reductions. Okay, so they give some of the um, curves of what the emissions need to be, you know, when in order to possibly, uh, you know, reach some of these, these, these targets, you know, more on the wildfires and the, the number of fires, areas burned, etc, etc. Um, Dying, dying, drying, boreal is losing the carbon sink. So the yeah, as we're as Canada is warming faster and faster, getting drier and drier, the tree mortality has been accelerating with a declining carbon sink. The tropical forests have lost carbon sink, right? Think of the 
Amazon rainforest many years. It's no longer a carbon sink. So only the boreal remains, plus of course phytoplankton in the ocean. So this is these are drought indices and tree mortality rates. Um, and uh, you know it shows where the trees are being stressed. Um, this is the average annual biomass change rate throughout Canada's boreal forests. So biomass is being reduced and uh, there's a lot of details that you can find uh, in the actual uh, in the actual paper there. So um, problem right now with that site. Okay, world fires, location and heat. World fires radiate heat. Um, they emit CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, volatile organic compounds, and black carbon. The largest fires by far and intense are Af Africa crop residue burning, creates the largest fires by far and the most intense fires. So this is a very bad year for Canada. Look at previous years, 2022, 2016 to 2021 different curves i mean already we're, we're spiking up u.s smoke pollution of course way way up so we've got the boreal forest fires going up here and look at the there's fires down here in in africa huge fires um africa always by far has the largest fires lasting many months the african heat radiation is enormous for a huge region southeast the heat is intense. They are for crop residue clearing. It's not, they're not necessary for agriculture. The extensive Brazil and Argentina fires are also similarly intentionally lit for crops as well as for clearing the Amazon rainforest. It's far too late, far above emissions. Uh, there's, a, there's a gap, these gap reports when saying when things have to decline UNAP 2011, for a likely chance of limiting to 2 Celsius this century, emissions peak and decline between 2010 and 2020. So of course we've missed that. Global emissions no higher than 44 gigatons of CO2 equivalent. We're, we're way, way above that. Here we are in 2023, we're far too late and over the emissions limit for 2 Celsius and 1.5 Celsius. Okay, fossil fuels incompatible with human survival. This is Guterres, the UN chief. Um, and this was, I believe, at the Bonn uh, Climate Conference. Uh, the world must, you know, fossil fuels are incompatible with human survival, basically is what he's saying. Greta on the failed June Bonn climate meeting. The UN climate cops set are set up to fail. The UN COPs voting use a consensus of unanimity or minus one. Fossil fuel countries have in effect veto, so they control it. Okay, so there's Greta saying these processes are failing, failing us here, failing our children, failing all of humanity and future generations, failing the people bearing the brunt of the crisis today. Okay. Um, an unprecedented drought affects the Panama Canal. So NASA GRACE satellites can look at groundwater. This was a CNN report um, in mid, well, this was June 17th. The report was June 13th. Um, unprecedented, so here we go, South America. Um, this is the Panama, Central America, the Panama Canal here. Um, and this is uh, where it is here. This is, uh, look at the, these regions are in severe drought. Some of the worst possible percentile droughts. So there's a lake, uh, there's, so the canal connects different reservoirs, freshwater reservoirs, right? It's a lock system. And water levels in some of these reservoirs are very, very low and dropping, uh, forecasted to hit historic lows in July. Um, they, the lakes also supply Panama City. Um, you know, if the drought lasts too long and, and uh, is too hot, um, then those lakes, if the water levels get so low, then the canal basically can't operate. Texas, Louisiana, 25 million people, dangerous heat alert, you know, another heat alert in the U.S. Here's greenhouse gas emissions by sector. It's a recent excellent version. Let's just have a look here at what we get. 
State of the Climate Action 2022 Systems Change Lab. Another 218 page report and it's got excellent, uh, excellent uh, global greenhouse gas emissions by sector. You know, excellent data um, is what Peter's uh, been focusing on. So, okay, so he's picked this out and it shows the breakdown. Um, of where the greenhouse gases are coming by the different sectors. Shell oil, planet killing skullduggery. Shell plans to increase fossil fuel production despite its net zero pledge. Atmospheric CO2 is, a, is a, at a 4 million year high and 54 million year rate of increase high. Okay, so there, there you go. Heated Canada and Siberia burning. We can't forget about the heating in Siberia. Siberia, right? I mean, the fires in Canada are bad enough, but they're just as bad in Siberia and they don't get too much coverage. Um, global warming jumped from 1 point to 1.28 degrees Celsius from April when they were 1.06 Celsius. So April to May, you know, a huge jump. Um, you know, the world is rapidly heating up. Look at the temperatures in, in uh, Canada and Northern Canada and Siberia. You know, here and here, you know, Canada, we, we have all of these wildfires and smoke, you know, what, there's no reason they're not getting all of those things in Siberia as well. Okay, uh, fires are raging basically across the entire boreal forest of the world. Okay, um, there's no let up in the fires. You have, this is a double whammy, right? Because you're, not only are you taking all the embodied carbon in the wood materials of fires that are burning, but you're also destroying the sink, the carbon sink. These forests absorb huge amounts of CO2 yearly, and when they're burned, of course, you lose the carbon sink. The boreal forests are the largest forests on earth, on land, you know, and they're the biggest carbon sink. And, uh, you know, they do a lot of work in removing large parts of CO2 that we emit. So that the CO2 rise in the atmosphere is not even higher. And uh, of course the phytoplankton or the ocean version that does that too. World Bank confirms relocating fossil fuel factory farm subsidies. Um, subsidizing greenhouse gas pollution is the most manifest evil ever. Why Alberta and Northern Canada burns? Mid-May, Northern Alberta was 12 Celsius hotter than the 2014 to 22 average at that time of year. 12 Celsius, so this is the anomaly, and the, 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 the bright red is 12 or greater. 12 Celsius hotter than five years ago over this vast region. And this was, uh, you know, May 18th was the data. So look at the temperatures there. And then, you know, all the wildfires occurred in these, in, in these regions. And then of course it spread to Ontario and Quebec later. Climate change declines wheat in many regions. Okay, so there's crop models for wheat under global climate change show large negative yield impacts for African and Southern Asian countries where food security is always a problem. So this is uh, RCP 8.5 and the yield changes um, right, so huge declines in these regions. Um, global wheat production could be largely affected. Top wheat producing countries like India, Russia, Australia, and Pakistan are projected to have declining wheat yields. So then they're, what's available to export to other countries is a lot less. Yields predicted to decline by 15% in African countries and 16% in Southern Asian countries by 2050, by mid-century, right? Uh, global warming breached 1.5 Celsius on a day's basis in 2016, 2020, and 2023. So this is tracking breaches of the 1.5 C global warming threshold. Um, so here's the, this is the 1.5 C, is the dashed line. So anytime the temperature spikes above, you're exceeding this 1.5 C. So here's, uh, you know, here's January through July. 
for for different years. We've got 2016 here. We've got 20 is the blue. We've got 2020 is the brown and and the dark brown or or even reddish is 2023. And this is the 1.5 line. And you can see when we've breached it, and we're breaching it more and more often. We reached 1.9 Celsius in 2016. That there was a large El Nino going on. We've reached 1.65 already, and the El Nino is just getting started. So if we exceed, you know, we're gonna it looks pro we're probably gonna go way way up. Okay, uh, climate change, U.S. dystopic bad news, heat alerts, toxic wildfire smokes, barrage of damaging storms um, in the U.S. South tornadoes, etc., toxic smoke warnings. Pre-COP, UN bond climate meeting fails. Rich countries fail to deliver promised and required assistance to poor and vulnerable countries. There seems to be unlimited funds for war, not to prevent global climate catastrophe, which is coming up fast. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, some information on the, the pre-COP 28 uh, meeting. You know, it's becoming like a broken record, all of these failed climate conference. Canada fire weather maps. You know, this was from mid-June uh, forecast. Alberta and Quebec surface heat and surface drought. Okay, so this is temperature anomalies. Um, we know Alberta was very bad. Uh, here's Alberta again, June 5th. This is soil, surface soil moisture from the Grace Gravity Anomaly Satellite and also Quebec uh, getting there uh, as well, parts of Ontario. Uh, more on the wildfire burning, Canada's unprecedented forest fires, vast intense burning. This is Copernicus satellite data, so you can see the extent of the burning here. This is African agriculture grass fires, wildland, wildfires in Russia and Boreal, so not it wasn't as bad back then. Um, in in uh, Russia than it, was, than it was in Canada. Um, cumulative CO2 emissions. USA is by far the most in, increasing fast. China's catching up. Slight slowing in the EU and UK increasing for all countries. This is global suicide scenario basically. So here we got cumulative CO2 emissions, billions of tons of CO2 from 715 to now. So this is the US, of course, leading. Our world in data is a great data site. Data site. The EU, China is catching up fast. UK is flatter, you know, and other countries here. Uh, new small climate emergency institute site for mobile phones. Okay. Um, so Peter's just changed things to, uh, you know, have some data specific things for mobile phones. Here we go. Here's the source of the whole problem. 100 million barrels of oil plus 60 million equivalent barrels of like it's plus 60 million barrels of oil equivalent of gas. And that's natural gas daily. Right. This is what the what we're burning. Fossil fuels stayed about 80 percent of world energy for decades. Okay, only government intervention can change that, but they're subsidizing fossil fuels still, right? And that's, this is this is evil. This is pipelines. We could circle the Earth 30 times with the combined length of the pipelines on the planet. The world's oil and gas pipelines. Um, you can see here, oil, you know, gas, 84% of them, oil, 16% of them. You can see them in the, the, the top 10 countries in terms of the length of pipelines. Um, energy, over the past 50 years, the world's annual energy consumption has nearly tripled. 80% is fossil fuels, so coal, oil, gas, and then nuclear, hydropower, wind, solar, you know, renewables here, just a small chunk. Growing rapidly, but it's not causing anything. It's not replacing anything else. It's just uh, adding to the total energy. Uh, 193,400 kilometers, more gas pipelines, more CO2, more methane, more global heating. Okay, so uh, globally, there's 70,900 kilometers of pipelines in construction with an additional 122,500 kilometers in pre-construction development. Uh, 
More natural gas means more CO2 when it's burned for energy, more methane from natural gas leaks, right? This is kilometers of pipeline and the proposed construction ranked by kilometers of in development. So construction is the red and being proposed. So we're still going crazy on building more and more pipelines. The free market drives climate catastrophe. Okay, we're on a fast track to fossil fuel catastrophe. Um, this is clean energy, you know, is growing. Uh, fossil fuel growth is slowed, right? But it's crazy. Um, we have to drop to zero subsidies for fossil fuels to stabilize climate. Okay, Scandinavian feedback methane emissions. Um, so it's showing, you know, you're getting lots of emissions from Scandinavian countries from the wet. This is where the wetlands are. This is where the methane, surface methane is. Course coincidence with them. Uh, points in red are satellite derived wetland. Okay, so huge amounts of, of emissions coming from Scandinavia, wetlands. Sea surface temperature, uh, this is the uh, April to June 2023 sea surface temperature and you can see uh, this is from 60 south to 60 north. This was a 2016 record um, here, you know, here and here's where we are now. Okay, and I've shown you, you know, this has become up in a number of different cases. Uh, Canada's fires are the largest source of particulates, the world's largest source of deadly fine particulates, PM 2.5. These fires must be burning like hell, and you can see this is atmospheric Copernicus showing PM 2.5, fine particulate matter, and you can see, you know, the Alberta fires generating it, the Quebec fires generating it. When the wind patterns blew this south, that's when uh, we turned uh, New York City into a Martian looking place with orange skies. Okay, uh, potential 50 to 100% increase in rate warming. I think I'll finish up with uh, this because um, with some of James Hansen's stuff because it's so important. This is the Earth energy imbalance, a huge increase. Um, January 2015 to December 22 is the green and then the red is March 2020 to February 2023. A huge uptick in the earth energy imbalance and this is one of the key images. So this is a path that we were on with warming. This is global temperature anomaly over time and this is a path that we were on which is an increase of 0 0.18 degrees Celsius per decade. Here is what what Hansen has calculated we're getting with accelerated warming, with reduction of aerosols, etc. The lower curve here is 0 0.27 degrees Celsius per decade compared to 0 0.18. The upper curve, I think, is 0 0.36 degrees Celsius per decade. So if you want to know how much the temperature is going to warm, you know, in a certain year, just use this sort of scaling. Um, this amount per decade is what it was, but from from uh, 2010 onwards, um, the warming seems to have accelerated between, so use those two numbers. Um, it's not written on here, but I know I'm telling you it's uh, 0.27 and 0.36. So the, So the rate of warming has greatly increased. Okay, so I think I'll finish up here. I got to June 14th. So this is 10 days. This is 10 days of posts by Peter. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I'll probably do another video of posts going back because we've only covered the last 10 days of climate on the planet. And you can see, uh, you know, how much stuff is coming out on, on the deterioration of our planet. So thank you for listening. Please consider going to my website, paulbecklet.net, donating to my PayPal to support my research and videos. And I really, um, you know, Peter is, is uh, doing incredibly, incredibly important work. So make sure you follow him on Twitter and, uh, you know, you can keep up to date on the latest in, in, in climate. Thanks for listening and bye for now.